Welcome to Beals Science, I'm Craig Beals. I get a lot of requests from people that want me to make rockets and rocket fuel. So today I figured, let's make rockets. But I'm gonna do it a little bit different than you might expect. We're gonna make little tiny rockets that we can launch in the lab. Out of these, pipettes. We're gonna have some chemical reactions, we're gonna make some fuel, and we're gonna launch these bad boys right across the room. We've got a couple of test tubes, all right, and then I've got a stopper with one hole in the top, and that stopper needs to easily fit inside my test tube. Cut this off, so here we go. About a centimeter, I suppose. This is gonna become my rocket. The other side, right here, I need this for my gas collection device. Cut this off right about here. Put this right inside of my rubber stopper. I can fit my pipette bulb on the top to collect the gas. We need a way to light the gas or to get a spark inside of here, but we're gonna use this, okay? This is just a barbecue lighter that we've modified so that we can get a spark. Now watch, see the spark on the end right here? Perfect. This has got to slide on here, so you have to have the right size pipette to be able to get a spark in there. Let's build one of these. You gotta get that to connect here in order to throw a spark across. We gotta get it to attach here and here. If you go out and find an electrical pin like this that you can then clamp on the bottom, okay? And then this is gonna slide right on here. The other side, use electrical tape and tape it against here. Then, a little bit of heat shrink. Get your little heat gun out, put it all together, and we're gonna end up with this. What I wanna do is find out how much water my pipette bulb can hold. And then I'm gonna break it up into equal increments. So I'm gonna take my bulb and I'm gonna fill it all the way up with water and transfer it over here into a graduated cylinder. We're right at seven milliliters. I'm gonna break this up into six equal parts. Now notice one thing I did when I did my measurements, I'm leaving a little bit at the top. There's a reason for that. I'm gonna fill that with water. You'll find out why in just a bit. Each one of those is approximately 1.1, 1.2 milliliters. Now I can start to do a ratio. I can fill it up with a certain amount of gas to here, a certain amount of gas to there, and test how well my little rocket is gonna go pew. Let's make some gas. This is probably a good time to remind you not to try this experiment at home. Hydrochloric acid can be really, really dangerous. The gases that we're producing, obviously they're combustible and when mixed together, they'll go boom. So don't try this one at home. We're gonna start by making hydrogen gas in this test tube. Now I'm gonna add just enough to get about three quarters full. Zinc, obviously just a metal, but it will react with this to cause hydrogen gas to form. Then we're able to put our stopper back on the top and we'll get gas come out of here. I need to capture that gas in our rocket. So this is completely filled with water and I'm gonna set it over the top. As it generates gas, those bubbles are gonna bubble up in here, push the water out and I've got hydrogen gas right up here. Let's talk about whether or not hydrogen is combustible. Now, we have to have three things in order to get a flame. We have to have fuel, there's fuel in here. We have to have oxygen and we have to have heat. So let's see, ready, that's it, that's it. Because we're missing something, we're missing the oxygen. There we go. We're gonna use a minuscule amount because we don't want this to decompose all at once. Just a very slow decomposition. Remember, this is oxygen gas. We're gonna fill it up. Let's try this with the oxygen gas. Remember, we have to have three things. We have to have fuel, oxygen, and heat, or fire. Nothing. This is why we have to mix them. Let's do it. Now you'll start to see why I put these graduates on here, these measurements. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the hydrogen. We're gonna move it over here to the oxygen. Let's go burn it, see what happens. We would expect a significant difference here with this. Oh. Okay, see? Kaboom, that's what we want. One of the very best things about doing this activity is that there are any number of variables that can be tested. We're just gonna test the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen and see if we can come up with the perfect ratio 
of hydrogen gas to oxygen gas to get the best launch. I'll use this exact same setup the whole time so that I don't introduce any other variables. Let's launch. We're gonna start off with a ratio of one part hydrogen gas and five parts oxygen. And then we'll work our way down all those ratios and find out which one is the very best. We're gonna leave a little bit in the bottom to keep the gas inside. We've got our six rockets in waiting. Let's launch them. Slide it right on here so it's up above the water. One, two, three. No kaboom. Now the ratio is probably no good. Let's see. Try number two. Same result. Again. Oh, little boom. If we look at our results then for one part hydrogen to six parts oxygen, here's our launch pad. We have one rocket that went out that direction. The rest of them didn't come off the launch pad. So that tells us, hmm, our ratio is not correct. At least not yet. The next six that we're gonna make, we're gonna do two parts hydrogen to four parts oxygen. Oh, yeah. Three H2 and three O2. Look at the difference here. Look at the difference. My blues are out here. That's three to three. We're finally getting somewhere, getting a good ratio for launch. Four to two ratio. Ready, set. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Let's go find them all. Let's think about this. In water, we have H, two, oh. We have twice as much hydrogen as oxygen. Here, we've got twice as much hydrogen as oxygen, which is why this ratio should have been the best. Look at the difference. Here's our ratio of four to two, and those are three to three. So three to three did pretty well, but consistently with the ratio of four to two, I was hitting the wall, I almost hit the camera a few times. This makes perfect sense because like I showed you, water has a ratio of twice as much hydrogen to oxygen. So this is basically proving our chemistry. And in my class, when we've finished doing this lab and this activity, and we've launched our rockets across the room, we must have a few students that meddle in rocket science. And I think today, all of us together have officially meddled in rocket science. You know, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. You got a lot more stuff going on here at Beale Science and at BealScience.com. Hit the subscribe button right down there. I would love it if you did. Hit the little bell next to it. Then you'll get an update every time I make a new video, which happens quite regularly. But you know what? The reason I make these videos is to remind you to keep on learning.